Asthma is a mismatched disease that causes periodic episodes of severe but reversible bronchial obstruction in people with hypersensitive or hyperresponsive airways. Frequent and repeated attacks of acute asthma may lead to irreversible damage in the lungs or the development of chronic asthma. Acute attacks may be superimposed on the chronic condition. There are two types of asthma, intrinsic and extrinsic, and today in this presentation we'll be focusing on extrinsic asthma. The only risk factor for asthma is genetics, and some triggers for asthma include dust mites, cockroaches, viral infections, animals, mold, or air pollutants. For normal physiology, during normal inspiration, the normal flow of air goes into the upper respiratory from either the nose or the mouth down through the pharynx, down into the lower respiratory system, which consists of the larynx, to the trachea, which branches to the left and right primary bronchi, and then throughout the bronchioles into the sacs of alveoli. This is where oxygen and carbon dioxide move between the lungs and the bloodstream. The contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscle layer surrounding the bronchioles is innervated by the ANS, which controls the diameter of the bronchial airway. In normal airflow, the bronchial tubes are relaxed and tissue thin, allowing for easy airflow. When an allergen is inhaled, specific immunological processes in the body initiate acute asthma attack. Dendritic cells, an antigen-presenting cell found in epithelial tissue lining the respiratory tract, will phagocytose the particle and present the antigens on their surface. These cells are picking up something that is not harmful to the body, such as pollen or dust mites, and is treating them like they are a pathogen. Helper T cells will detect this and send out messages to attract B cells to divide and form plasma cells. These plasma cells will produce immunoglobulin E antibodies that are specialized for allergic reactions, particularly type 1 hypersensitivity. The IgE attach to mast cells forming an IgE mast cell complex. The allergen will attach to the IgE antibody found on the complex, activating the pathway of the complement system. Afterwards, the IgE mast cell complex results in degranulation and the release of histamines, interleukin-5 and 1, and prostaglandins. The histamines cause activation of the ANS, leading to the band of smooth muscles surrounding the bronchi and bronchioles to contract, constricting the airway, also known as bronchospasm, a process that is not wanted when not exposed to non-harmful allergens. While this is occurring, vasodilation of the blood vessels causes edema, which is swelling of the bronchioles. Goblet cells in epithelial tissue are stimulated to increase the production of mucus. Interleukin-5 stimulates eosinophils, a type of white blood cell that assists in the inflammation process, which causes damage to the lung tissue. However, when a person is continuously exposed to an allergen remodeling, which is the irreversible narrowing of these airways, and fibrosis, which is the formation of scar tissue in the airways, permanently affecting the flow, occur. This damage limits the movement of air. Now we are going to talk about the acid-base balance. Respiratory acidosis is also called hypoventilation. Acidosis is what causes the body's pH levels to decrease, making it acidic. Respiratory acidosis is when carbon dioxide accumulates in the lungs and cannot be removed causing a rise in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Normally, carbon dioxide should pass through the lungs in gas exchange with oxygen. Respiratory acidosis often occurs when a person breathes shallowly and slow or when gas exchange is hampered by different diseases. This causes carbonic acid levels in the blood to increase. From this, hydrogen levels drop and carbonic acid levels become dissociated with which causes release of hydrogen ions and the pH levels become low. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide is greater than 45 millimeters of mercury and the pH is lower than 7.25. Respiratory acidosis symptoms include confusion, fatigue, lethargy, and shortness of breath. Now for relating the symptoms to the pathophysiology. Coughing is caused because lungs are trying to expel the mucus and force oxygen through the constricted airway. Coughing also helps expel foreign irritants in the lungs, such as pollen or allergens. Wheezing. Air is trying to force its way through the restricted airway tube, which is narrow. Chest tightness or pain. 
As your airways become more inflamed and filled with mucus, the smooth muscles in the airway constrict, which causes the tightness. Also, with no air in the lungs from the decrease of pressure, these muscles won't be supported properly. Hypersensitivity and inflammation of the airways is caused by the stimulation of eosinophils. Dyspnea, also known as shortness of breath, is caused by inflammation and mucus buildup blocking the airways and smooth muscle contraction, making it difficult for air to enter the lungs. Relating the key concepts, proteins. The main proteins involved are MHC proteins, which are antigen presenting cells. Cat dander, which is an allergen, is a FELD1 protein. Interleukins are signaling proteins. Cell membrane. Oxygen exchange occurs across cell membrane and the IgE antibodies attached to the mast cell receptors on the cell membrane. It also plays a key role in endocytosis and exocytosis. Homeostasis. This keeps a constant pH level for proper bodily function because respiration helps control the acid-base balance of the body. In summary, asthma causes bronchial constriction and narrowing of the airways and decreases the amount of oxygen taken in.